Welcome back, everyone. Hope you can see me. And uh, we have a great show today. Anything that I say is not meant to diagnose you or replace your medical care. So check with your doc before um, implementing any of the suggestions. And so at uh, some point in the very near future, I wanted to I promised you last week I was going to show you our, our new pet. And um, baby Billy. So uh, we'll see... Uh, Please when, bring him. Billy's He's just too cute. You got to see baby Billy, everybody. Okay, Karen, bring, bring baby Billy in. <laughs> oh, bo oh, no. All right, here we go. This is baby Billy right here. This is, this is a cat. No, it's a, <laughs> it's a goat. It's a, it's a dwarf Norwegian. Yeah. Norwegian dwarf goat. Oh my yeah. goodness. And it loves, oh, look right. at that nibbling on his ear. Hi, Karen. So you're not going to prepare him in some sort of dish, are you? No. You talk about climber. This <laughs> what a great guy. I'm trying to keep him out of the house, but he, he finds his way in. Oh yeah. my goodness. Well, look, he loves Dr. Berg. Good wow. grief. Oh my goodness. Okay. Why don't you go feed him the bottle? <laughs> <laughs> Listen to him. Oh, that's okay, great okay. TV, Karen. Right. Thanks, Karen. Okay. Right, I'm going to do a show Bye. here. Bye, Billy. Good to see you again, Bye. Karen. <laughs> okay, okay, bye. Okay, saliva wow. on the ear. That's always wow. nice in the morning. <clears throat> All right. That's fantastic. Well, Dr. Berg, I tell you what we're going to do if we can. So we've got a whole full lineup in the green room, but Amy, poor thing, uh, <clears throat> has got everything but her volume, uh, her uh, gain uh, squared away. So she has used our great chat system and she's going to be our first question. And uh, Amy okay. says, uh, I do a lot of 16-8 intermittent fasting, uh, in, but in the morning she uses heavy cream in her coffee and she wants to know how sinful is that? Is that breaking her fast? Uh, uh, reassure her. Well, you're not going to increase insulin by anything any significant factor. So I, I think you're going to be totally fine. The only thing you got to look at is um, if you have a severe low metabolism, like a real severe low metabolism. But other than that, I wouldn't worry about a little cream. Now, that being said, uh, there's a lot of uh, these drinks that people have where they, uh, it's kind of like a turmeric uh, latte and they add some almond milk in there. If you have anything with an almond milk recipe, um, that or involves collagen when you're fasting. I don't recommend that. I recommend instead doing the whole cream, it could be whole whipping cream, grass-fed, organic, and then water. That way you, um, you have more of a fat and less protein because almond milk has a little too much protein. I've noticed when people do that, they tend to be hungry. So one way that you know that you're not supposed to be doing that is if you have you consume some drink and all of a sudden you're an hour later, you're like, Hmm, why am I hungry now? Well, because it affected your blood sugars. So, but I, I think, um, I would not worry about it, Amy. I would just uh, do the cream. I do the cream, but yeah, you want to do the, if you had a choice between whole cream versus half and half, do the whole cream much better. Wonderful. Well, that is great. Well, thanks Amy so much for asking that question. And uh, let's see. And by the way, Billy was hungry. So I don't know about Amy, but Billy was definitely hungry. That is such a yeah, great we're, little uh, creature. We're, uh, feeding that uh, uh, baby Billy some uh, raw um, goat's milk. Uh, there was a problem with the mother, so uh, we have to feed it twice a day. So uh, very cute and uh, consumed a tremendous amount of milk. So um, sometimes gets confused with my earlobe for... <laughs> that bottle so is he a keto goat i mean is that fair to say on the yeah it's uh well uh yes even though uh, goats consume grass and weeds which is uh fiber but it's a uh, very it's, you wouldn't count it as part of a carb because there's very little insulin effect with that much fiber all right well listen we want to kick off the first uh question it's actually a true false and see if billy can get it and dr berg i don't know if you can see that today Okay, so true or false, uh, stevia, that herb stevia, that sweetener, can kill the Lyme pathogen. Is that true or false? All right, audience, get on that. And let me see what Terry has for us. Boy, we've got people calling in from all over. Let's see, we're waiting for Terry to give us some questions and our great shout out. 
So why don't we go to our next uh, participant? And uh, I am so worldly, Dr. Berg, that I know how to pronounce this guy's name. It is, uh, I wrote it down, Najaraj, right? Did I do that right, sir? Nagaraj, yes. Go ahead with your question. Morning, uh, morning, Dr. Berg. Good morning. So thanks to you, Dr. Berg, that in about eight months' time, I lost 57 pounds of weight. Wow. Fantastic. Okay. I was on, on intermittent fasting. I am a strict vegetarian. So I was not sure whether the, the keto diet would be something that I would get adapted to. I could not see a lot of options. But then from, from whatever I researched further to your insisting on an intermittent fasting and a keto-based diet, for about 10 weeks now, I'm on a keto diet included. And, and I think I'm loving this lifestyle. I have, I have uh, now found that uh, intermittent fasting plus the keto lifestyle makes all the difference to me. Mm -hmm. uh, love shopping for clothes almost every two weeks uh, right off the shelf rather than going to a, a tailor to get them made. So I think that has been a very positive change. Able to run, able to, to walk, Instead of instead of you know just sitting uh, idle and uh, and finding something to do on the chair, and I think that that change is something that I have to really thank you for. And the question that I have for you is that now I'm actually paranoid of of eating, of of even going back to my old lifestyle. So how do I balance between my newfound life at at 50 and uh, and you know, managing to be social at events or not refusing to go out for a for a party, I, I discovered your uh, cauliflower pizza yesterday. So that is the plan for the weekend. But but I hope that I I will not turn out to be an antisocial element by refusing to go out and and be with family and friends. Well, you have a couple of choices. Uh, you can uh, get all new friends, which is an option. Um, find some friends that are on keto, um, or you can um, get your current friends to switch over to keto. Those are your only two options. <laughs> but um, but it's actually good that you're paranoid. That way you'll stick to it. But um, you know, there's a point where you build up enough health where you can occasionally, with your own control, you know, have certain certain things that you wouldn't normally have and then recover from it. If you're keto adapted and you have this reserve of health, so you don't have to be always that perfect, but it's one of those things you have to experiment and see how, how you do. The problem with that, it's a slippery slope with a lot of people because they'll tend to go off the program and not get back on the program. And then uh, I see them sometimes in the, in the comment section. Yeah, it's been six months. I never got back on the program. So, um, you know, it, doing this keto really puts you in a um, in the driver's seat to really see how food affects your different parts of your body and different metrics. So that would be, um, you know, rather than this uh, thing where a lot of people are in this, well, you know, health problems are just random. And if you're going to have it, you might have it. There's nothing you can do about it. No, there's totally, you can do a lot about it just by having the knowledge. So now you have the knowledge of how your body responds to foods. And, uh, um, and so now you, you can make some decisions. And uh, I think, though, I do understand what you're saying because I have a, a lot of friends and family members that are not on keto, and it's, uh, I'm the odd man out. And so, you know, it's just you're going to have to have new community. You know, like when we do the summit, the keto summit, maybe next year, you'll have to come out. There's like... A thousand people that are keto friendly. They're they're into it, and you, you'll meet a lot of friends. and And I'm sure there's definitely uh, groups in your area too that you can uh, start associating with other people that are on keto and and do the best you can. So that's all. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> Thank you very much once again. Thank you. Well, that's fantastic, uh, Nagaraj. What a, a a wonderful problem to have. You're having a wonderful life. And, uh, you know, how can I continue on this new path and you're, you know, trimmed up? I mean, I just think that's fantastic. And congratulations for that. And it's so, uh, you know, such a worthy uh, path forward not to join all those people that are suffering around the world with high blood sugar and miserable and tired and all that. Who wants to go to that party? 
Steve, what, what would what would you do if uh, you you're in a family event and you end up at the IHOP for breakfast? First of all, you normally don't eat breakfast, and everyone's consuming the the pancakes with the marshmallow with the the whipped cream and the chocolate, and then hash browns. Um, would you be able to resist all that? Well, yeah, actually, I, I can because not because you know I'm looking at my waistline or any of that, but I get so miserable. So the delicious, yeah. you know, jack up for ten minutes, but then by noon I'm wiped out, and then also I've broken, you know, I, I've I've broken that rule. And sometimes it takes me weeks or a month to get back. Oh, we've already screwed up, so now I have a donut. And it's so addicting to me, it's not worth it. And more than whatever health benefit you know I might have in terms of cardiac or this or blood sugar, which is all great, that's not a motivator. I mean, oddly enough, people get unhealthy until they die, and I'm probably one of them. But the mental component is definitely um, you know, an incentive to not do that stuff. I get really depressed when I eat a bunch of sugar. You give me a couple of cups full of yeah. sugar, and I'm not going to have a good day. So I can do that. And you're right, right Dr. Berg. I don't even consider breakfast. Uh, I don't even start to my first meal at the minimum would be 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And for some reason, I'm not that disciplined a guy. But intermittent fasting, I can do that. And then you can have yeah. a great meal, fabulous meal, you know, or two if you want within a couple hour period and life is good as uh, Nagaraj uh, demonstrated in his wonderful pitch to us. Great. All right, do we have an answer to our question yet? Let's see, I bet we do. Um, boy, he's got, so, oh, okay, quiz number one. Uh, and let's bring that up so everybody can uh, see that. And the question asked Stevia, can it kill the Lyme pathogen? That is a fascinating Question and the audience has responded. Hang on, let me catch up with the gadgets. The audience has responded as such: fifty-five percent of our responders say true, and forty-five percent, the rest of them say it's false. Well, I guess uh, you know. Now, the study that I'm quoting is actually quite fascinating, and it's it's not done on humans; it's done in a little petri dish. But uh, they have found that um, it has a sig not only an effect on the uh, pathogen, the, the, the bacteria that's a spirochyte, killing it. But also the biofilms that these, this microbe that becomes stealth and goes into a dormant stage in these little igloo calcium little houses, they're called biofilms, uh, which they kind of just wait until there's a better environment to come out and kick you when you're down. Uh, stevia is apparently a significant, creates a significant effect on these microbes, even uh, uh, putting that lime into either remission or wiping it out of your body. So I'm going to be releasing the video, which is very exciting. So if someone does have lime, um, it's another thing to add to the protocol. And it's a, it's a non um, sugar sweetener, which uh, the whole leaf has some really cool effects. So stay tuned for that video. Really exciting. Uh, and speaking of exciting, it's how many people love the Dr. Berg show. And here we go. They're coming in today from the UK, Canada, Jordan, Ghana, Taiwan, Iran, uh, the Sahara, uh, Bonjour, did I say that? Bonjour, Switzerland, uh, Germany, hang on just a second, this slipped out of my fingers, Dubai, India, Australia, Qatar, Lithuania, South Africa, Latvia, Jordan, Singapore, uh, Japan, Greece, Romania, Kurdistan, France, wow, Egypt, the Netherlands, Algeria, Pakistan, Mexico, Chile, Argentina, Trinidad and Tobago, Denmark, Belgium, Peru, and all across these United States. And again, Terry, our producer, was so glad his fingers must be pulsing and swollen after typing all that. So that is fantastic. Why don't we go to social media? Faye from, U Faye, excuse me, from YouTube, what can I do about extreme nausea? Now, she doesn't let us know, you know what she's doing, but I don't know. Is there a catch-all um, answer for that, Doc? It's gallbladder, gallbladder. There's something going on with the gallbladder. I'm not saying you have gallstones. It could just be the gallbladder is backed up. Uh, something related to your diet. You're eating something that is that you're that you probably shouldn't be eating, and it's affecting the gallbladder. One really simple thing you can do is just take your hands and massage underneath the right rib cage for like about 30 seconds. And if that nauseousness goes away, then we know for sure it's the gallbladder. But when the gallbladder backs up, one of the big symptoms is uh, nauseousness, uh, burping, belching, and bloating. 
those are the key things with the gallbladder. All the bees. Well, good luck with that. Mike from YouTube, I've been on keto for a month and not seen results. What should I do? I would stay tuned for my next video that I'm going to release uh, about, it's an updated video on how to burn belly fat fast. But this video goes into some practical details that go beyond the generalities that everyone else says, some practical things that I've learned from experience. And there's, there's five of them, which takes about 20 minutes to explain all of them. But that's going to be a really good video for those people that are not getting results. But um, it's, it's the key things that you really need to focus on. Uh, so you're not overwhelmed by all this information. So I'll keep it really simple. And it's an updated version of a video I did four years ago um, because I've found some new information. So I would stay tuned for that video that I will release this next week. Um, it'll be good. It'll be a real good one. Well, we can't wait for that. Theta from Facebook. Can we have MCT oil and stevia, kind of like our earlier question, in our coffee during our fasts? Yeah, absolutely. Not a problem. Um, the only time um, I would not take MCT oil is if you're having diarrhea, because <laughs> that's one of the side effects, um, if you have too much of it. So some people, what they do, they don't, they don't make the connection. So here they are. They get diarrhea because they had too much because you have to kind of slowly build up to it. And then they keep taking it over and over and wonder why the diarrhea doesn't go away because it has a laxative effect. So it's great for people that with constipation. <laughs> well, I guess it is. Mark from Facebook, I've read that uh, you should only consume one source of protein during your meals. Is that true? Also, thank you for your videos. They helped me get through COVID. Oh, one of the COVID victims. That's great. Um, it's false. Uh, you can have multiple sources of protein with a meal that doesn't make any difference. Um, if you combine it or just have one type, no, I wouldn't. That's not a factor at all. Well, that's wonderful. I tell you what, why don't we kick off the next question so we can stay on, uh, on schedule and another true false doc. Okay, here we go. True or false. American cheese is not cheese. That's un-American, for goodness sakes. All right, audience, dig into that. And why don't we uh, go on to our next participant, another person coming in from Florida. And this is Adele. Adele, if you'd unmute yourself, we're going to get you on with Dr. Berg. And there you go. Hello, Dr. Berg, and it's a pleasure to meet you. Nice meeting um, you. Uh, I thank you for having me on your show. Um, I'm an avid follower of your videos. Uh, I have lost 16 pounds. I wow. have seen many doctors been tested many times. And until my husband and I were watching television, there was an advertisement about <laughs> insulin resistance that I jumped on the bandwagon and said, I think that this is my situation. Mm -hmm. That's where I did my research. I found you. I'm grateful. And I lost 16 pounds. Wow. Hopefully, I will lose more. And um, I just wanted to ask you this question because I did watch your video about a CT scan because my problem is I have high cholesterol and it's genetic. Uh, I'm presently on resuvastatin and um, I have also tachycardia. But my question to you, Dr. Berg, is that I did proceed and get a CT scan. And just to mention that I did find a primary doctor who listens just like you do. And she was the one that actually mentioned it before I can even mention it. And I did get the CT scan and my score was 139.5, of which I'm concerned about because I want it to be just like you, all zeros. <laughs> You know, um, you, you don't have to be that concerned. It's actually, that's on the lower side. That's on the low, low side. Um, when it gets like over 400, then you have to worry. But your, your score is still um, good. Um, I, I wouldn't be too concerned about that. But there's always, you know, you're like me. I like to have it to be zero. So you can work on this over time and bring it down to zero. I really think you can. Um, you've already, you've had probably insulin resistance for many years. So of course that's been affecting the arteries, but now 
the inflammation has gone down because you're on keto, you're losing weight. So it's just a matter of time to let it reverse. But now you have a baseline. So now you can compare it to something maybe in several months from now and just see the, and see things improving. I think um, okay. the, the most important nutrient to take just for the inside of the artery um, that will really counter um, the rusting effect or the calcification would be vitamin E, but the form tocotrienol. You might already be taking that, but tocotrienol. I am. Okay, yeah. good. Then, then you're going to be really good because that's a powerful one for the heart. And then, um, so this, the cholesterol is not going to, um, if you're on low carb, even though you have a genetic problem, the type of LDL, I would imagine, I would put, I would put money down that would be the kind that's not going to go into the arteries. And I think you should maybe already did this, get an advanced lipid profile to measure the particle size to see if it's the small dense particles or the large buoyant. I would bet anything it's the large buoyant LDL and it's not the small dense, in which case, even if your cholesterol is higher with the medication or whatever, you're still going to be in good shape. Thank you so much, doctor. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. And then just don't forget vitamin K2 as well. I think that's a that's just one other factor that keeps the calcium out of the arteries, and you already might be doing that as well. So I'm doing that. Type of thing. Okay, good, good. You're on the right track. Oh, that's terrific. Well, they look, and we don't want to forget Anthony. You didn't see him, but he's holding on to his wife and supporting her and all her uh, great efforts. So uh, you know, uh, a happy Floridian couple. Hang on just a second here. Let me just hold on. That's great. Well, just look, awesome. come on, nice to meet yeah, stick you. your head in there, Anthony. Lean over and let him see what a great husband she has. There he is. There's the happy couple. Former, uh, <laughs> former uh, detective, so we're really glad for all the things he did. Now he's earning his reward down in Florida and watching his wife get more and more healthy every day. So that's just fantastic, guys. All right, so let's go on to the quiz question, which uh, poor Adele probably didn't have time to consider. Uh, and let's uh, let's look at what that said again. Another true false: American cheese is not cheese, claims Dr. Berg. And the audience largely agrees with you. Uh, there's a quorum: 90% uh, say that that's true. It's not cheese. 10% are gas that you suggest such a thing, and they say it's false. Who's right? Yeah, it's uh, not considered a cheese. It's considered a, a pasteurized cheese product. <laughs> So in order to be considered cheese, you have to have over 51% of that product, actual real cheese. Wow. So when you have those uh, little uh, wonderful cheese, little things that you open up, Steve, on the weekends, and you're putting it on your hamburger and, uh, and your French fries, um, realize that it's, it's this other product. I'm going to be doing a video on that as well. But um, boy, growing up, I used to live on that type of cheese and I thought, wow, it sounds so wholesome, American cheese, but they actually, um, they cracked down on the, the naming of that. They can't call it cheese anymore. So look on the back of the ingredients. If it's a pasteurized cheese product, then you know what's going on. Goodness. Is that Velveeta too? Should we? Um, well, I, I just uh, probably won't mention any, uh, names on that. You can figure it out by reading the labels. How about that? All right. I'll get started with that. <laughs> How about Joy from Facebook? How much vitamin B1 should I take every day for anxiety and nightmares? Well, I think I wouldn't, I would get a natural source. Um, and there's a couple out there and I would, the nutritional yeast is my favorite because even though it's a lot lower in the amounts, it's a natural form if it's not fortified. And um, some of the, the problem is, when you try to find vitamins that are natural, they take um, synthetics and they grow it with baker's yeast or even sometimes brewer's yeast, I'm sorry, brewer's yeast, sometimes nutritional, to spike this B vitamin. I don't like those. I like the unfortified nutritional yeast. And then you don't have to worry about um, your, um, your amounts because they're more functional versus taking like this 500 milligram synthetic pill, which is made from petroleum, over time, it throws out different things. Now, on a short-term basis, it might be okay, but I'd like to take it longer. But if you have anxiety, just take, um, keep taking nutritional yeast, play with the dosage until that anxiety goes away, and it, it will. It'll, you'll feel the sense of relief. You'll feel, oh my gosh, I feel calmer. 
uh, but it's dramatic. Nutritional yeast is one of the best best sources of B1. I don't mind making uh, shameless plugs, but I'm absolutely uh, hooked on this stuff. I don't know if he put some control substance in there to make me eat a bunch. He probably did. But if that's not the case, I use it uh, for um, appetite suppression, too. So whenever I feel like getting frisky with something bad, I nibble on a couple of these things, and it really keeps me uh, feeling uh, great. So nutritional yeast, try it. It's a taste to be... um, to get accustomed to you don't have to chew it i do i love it you can swallow them but either way they got great benefits so folks i vote for nutritional yeast i eat it all the time for what that is worth and the specific symptom the the real specific symptom it does a lot but the real thing i mean the if you have this internal nervous tension this inability to relax and it's just your, this tension that's something that is like 100 percent. it just addresses that one key point very fast it does a lot of things for a lot of other symptoms, but uh, boy, for this nervous internal anxiety stress, it works like a charm. Well, Lori says, if you eat nutritional yeast on the air again, I'm going to smack you in the back of the head. She's out of arm's reach, but I just can't help it. Once I talk about it, I munch it. So my teeth are filled with nutritional yeast and I'm feeling just great. And let's see. It's an acquired taste, Steve. Well, it is. I love it. Okay, here's maybe... A son of a naysayer, Concrete, as he calls himself, from YouTube. Is grass-fed food just a myth? What are the benefits? Grass-fed food um, is what uh, certain grass-fed animals are normally supposed to eat, not grains. Grains are very high in omega-6. The grass gives them more omega-3. Um, the microbes make it in, in their guts. So that's what they do. So... Also, um, it's better for their digestive system. So it's not a myth. It's much better. And um, I'll be doing videos on grass-fed because all of our animals that we have out in the pasture are grass-fed. And um, boy, do they are they different. Uh, I'm going to interview a farmer who came by um, and noticed that our few of our cattle that are just like gorgeous coats and the whole thing because we're doing apple cider vinegar in the water and completely grass-fed. So it's, it's quite a difference than the grain fed. Well, that's fantastic. Okay, let's go to Facebook. Allison, after a bout of COVID, there's a lot of people I had it too. My liver is inflamed and my enzymes are high. Should I wait until there is less inflammation before starting keto? <laughs> Don't hold your breath on that one. You need to actually start keto so the inflammation goes down. You also need NAC. That's essential. Get some NAC. It's a supplement. And get some um, milk thistle. Both of those are really good as an anti-inflammatory. And um, while we're at it, might as well add vitamin D as well. All three powerful anti-inflammatory natural things for the liver. Um, And yeah, don't wait for your inflammation to go down because it might not. You need to start on keto immediately because ketones are a natural anti-inflammatory and so is fasting fantastic well i tell you what our next question najaraj may uh, if i said it najaraj oh well I'm, i probably butchered it but anyway our next question it talks about turmeric which i believe uh, he enjoys quite often and it uh, well i might as well read it does cooking destroy the benefits of turmeric doc uh, that's what you have challenged the audience with and we'll throw that out. And I tell you what, why don't we go back to our green room and make a selection. And I choose Scott, who's coming from Jacksonville, Florida. Scott, you are on the air with Dr. Berg. Good morning, Dr. Berg. Can you hear me? Good morning. All right, excellent. Uh, It's an honor to finally uh, talk with you face to face because you're the only doctor who has truly given me hope. Hmm. I actually I actually spoke with you um, about eight months ago on your uh, show, and I have got to have the worst case of insulin resistance in the world. Hmm. And uh, I have had type 2 diabetes for over 19 years, and it is still raging on. Hmm. Um, I have been doing a healthy keto for about a year and a half now, and it took almost about four months to get into ketosis. Mm. 
that's how bad I am, really. Okay. Um, making sure um, that I am in ketosis every week. I have a, uh, a meter, and um, yet my morning readings are still high, as in like 200 blood sugar reading. Um, uh, and if that isn't bad enough, it goes even higher for about the next hour to about 240. And so I'm thinking that's probably like cortisol or something. Um, and then it finally comes down um, uh, to about like 140, which is still high, really. Mm -hmm. um, when we last spoke, you told me that I no longer uh, had uh, type 2 diabetes, but severe insulin resistance. And, um, and to give it time and to concentrate on my liver. Um, by taking vitamin D3 and K2 and benfotamine and zinc and milk thistle and choline. Um, I have been doing this, but are still having high readings. Uh, the only good news is that every time I go and get some blood work from the doctor, um, my A1C seems to be coming down little by little. For instance, the last time um, it was 7.9. And prior to that, it was 8.4. Um, and uh, so I am um, doing 18.6 Monday through Friday. I do have three meals on Saturday and then two on Sunday. Um, please, Dr. Berg, uh, my health means so much to me. And so far, um, I haven't had any complications, and I want to keep it that way. I do feel good. Um, but I, I know I don't know how long that's going to last. So I ask uh, to please uh, give me your wonderful advice. Thank you. Okay, so there's two things going on. You have insulin resistance, which occurs in the receptor of in, uh, on the in the cell. So it's a it's like you're talking to someone and someone's listening to what you're saying, right? So it's on the other other side of the communication. That's the, where the that's what insulin insulin resistance is. But when you have diabetes type two and the sugars are high, you also have another situation where the, the, the cells in the pancreas are just so tired. And that's why they're not pumping out any, as much insulin anymore, so there's no control in the blood sugar, or there's less control, so the, the sugar goes higher and higher and higher. So what we have to do is we have to not just work on the receptor, we want to work on the actual cells that are producing insulin. Um, are you taking medication any medication for your diabetes? Uh, yes, I do take uh, metformin and um, uh, Farsiga, which is an SGL2 inhibitor, uh, and I take um, high blood pressure medication. Okay. So you mentioned um, to avoid the complications, and so even though your blood sugars are higher, and I'm assuming you're your diet sugar is low. Mm -hmm. So where is this coming from? It's the liver. The liver is producing sugar because it, somehow the sensors and the thermostat is broken. So it's kind of like your house with a, you keep turning up the heat, but it's just still cold because there's the sensor is broken. That's the receptor for the insulin um, and it's, da it's downgraded. So there are some things that you're already doing now that are gonna really help you protect against the complications. So even though the blood sugar is high right now, consuming the healthy version of keto with the salads and the different herbs and things, that will um, reduce the free radical damage. And that's really the problem with diabetes is all the inflammation that occurs and all the free radical oxidation in the arteries and the eyes and the kidney. But if you're on keto like you are and you're doing in the healthy version like I teach people, at least you can reduce all those complications despite having high sugar. So that's really the good news. Um, and I think that's where you're headed. Um, the real exciting thing you told me was your A1C is coming down, which is way better evaluate um, like an indicator than your blood sugar itself, because that tells you overall three months what's really hap what, what is happening to your red blood cells with the with how um, the sugar is affecting the cells. So that's really good. I would like to do an experiment uh, for the next three months of just doing one meal a day, if you could do it, and have a big meal. Um, 
or work towards one meal a day. And I know in the week, see, because what happens is if you can be even more consistent and, and not even go off on the weekends, and it might be hard, and you would re reevaluate your A1C, I bet you it would come down in the low sixes, maybe even the higher fives. And that tells, that will tell me uh, really uh, what's going to happen long term because um, you, you got a lot of barriers. You got the history of being a diabetic, you have the severity of it. So you have to unfortunately be extra strict and you don't have that leeway even on the weekends. Um, so that's just something, a suggestion that I would recommend. One last thing, you may want to find um, an extract that is a, pan uh, a pancreas extract. And I have it in the blood sugar support, or you can find another product with pancreatic extract. Um, I've used that in my clinic for, with people with diabetes, and I'm not making any claims, but it sure helps um, support healthy blood sugars, and it helps support a healthy pancreas. Uh, if there's um, a problem with that cell that's pumping out insulin, so that's so that's the advice that I would recommend. And um, you can keep working on your sleep and your stress and exercise as, at the same time. I I will do that, doctor. And um, with the pancreas uh, extract, uh, when do I take that? And and uh, and how often? I would take two. If you're going to take my product, I would take two before bed. If you take another product, you just have to read the back of the label. But um, you would take it before bed um, and let it just kind of work all night long. And, um, and that way uh, you'll have a, um, some really cool effects, I think. So um, you'll have to come back on and tell us how, how, how you're doing in about three months. I hope I can give you a wonderful success story. Well, I'm, thank you so much. I'm sure you, you will, Scott. You seem awfully disciplined. And uh, if McMillan can do OMAD, I know you can because you're showing a great deal more discipline than I do on a day-to-day on a -day basis. So that's just fabulous. And our audience is disciplined in that they continue to answer these questions quickly. And the last one asked, does cooking destroy the benefits of turmeric? And the audience says... Uh, or at least 60% say that there is no effect on turmeric. 30% say turmeric is affected, and 10% say no effect at all. If you add black pepper, that's interesting. You know, the black pepper helps the absorption of turmeric, but what's well, fascinating, they've done some studies on roasting turmeric, cooking it, boiling it, even at temperatures over 300 degrees Fahrenheit for 70 minutes. And apparently, um, a lot of the antioxidant effect stays there, and it doesn't degrade. So I found that actually quite interesting, so I'm, I'm going to release a video on it. So for those people that are putting the turmeric in their, um, I'll fix the light in a second, um, in their drinks and uh, in their food, they're still getting a really nice benefit. Um, so don't feel like you're not. And... Um, Keep eating it, and I think you'll be good to go. There you are, you're multitasking, Doc. And, oh, yeah, I think yeah. it's about to come on. There we oh, go. There we are. There we go. Uh, looking like your old self again. Okay, why don't we go on to the next question. This is an interesting one, Doc, and if you'd read it for us. All right. Are you seeing that there? If not, let me read it for oh, okay. you. Okay, here we go. Okay, this is an interesting question because um, zinc, um, for those of you that don't know, it increases testosterone. So if zinc increases testosterone, why would anyone want to recommend it to someone with um, a disorder called PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is a disorder with, that it's actually it's estrogen dominant, it has too much estrogen, I'm, I'm sorry, too much testosterone. So PCOS is a, you have too much testosterone. Why would you recommend a pro, uh, an ingredient that would increase testosterone if someone already has too much testosterone? That's the question. Now, this, this is a little tricky, but I want to see, see what people know about this. Um, I'm going to release a video, and this is why I'm asking it, but there is a lot of people that have are, are zinc deficient, and... Um, there's a lot of people who have PCOS. And so 
sometimes when people take zinc, they, they're concerned because it's going to create more of a problem. But I want to clarify something, so I'm just going to ask the question first and then see what people say. All right, that's very interesting. Uh, let's see, Jana from Facebook, which foods are most likely to spike insulin? I mean, I, that's a pretty broad number, but Doc, what do you think? Well, if you narrow it down, the ones that are <clears throat> highest on the glycemic index. Now, a lot of people just go right to sugar, right? You think sugar is the highest. Table sugar is the highest. Table sugar is like, so it's 72. 72 on the glycemic index. Glucose is at 100. Maltodextrin is over 100, like 111. So there are other things that are higher than table sugar, um, but but it's more of a like a, a synthetic type sugar or an artificial sugar. Um, the reason why table sugar is only 72 and it's not 100 is because table sugar has a combination of glucose and fructose. And fructose on the glycemic index is something like, um, if I'm not mistaken, it's like 11. It's very, very low. But that doesn't mean it's good. It just means that the only organ that can handle all that fructose is your liver. So you're, you're just like overwhelming the liver like crazy. And you're going to give the person insulin um, resistance in a different, a different way. So despite table sugar being kind of not too high, on, comparatively to the things, um, it's it's not good. It's not good at all. In fact, it's uh, it's it's bad. So I don't know how I uh, took that question to the next level, and I think I um, should have just answered it by yes or no, uh, Steve. But there you have it. No, I think that's important because people don't know. And and again, the test for me is: Do I feel like crap a half hour later? And that'll tell me. And I just look back and say, What did I do? Okay, five donuts. Got it. Yogesh from YouTube, will whey protein or isolate protein impact the reversal of diabetes while on keto? Well, um, I think that I would not recommend uh, whey protein on keto because not, not only is it the highest thing on the insulin index, which are non-carbohydrate um, triggers to insulin uh, because it's, there's no fat in it, but the a protein in whey, which might have some casein, but it has other proteins, uh, I don't think is, is really good for your blood sugars. In fact, I know when I even consume whey protein, I don't feel good. Like it affects my liver. So um, what's even worse than the whey protein is the casein protein for the, for the liver as well. But, um, and I would not take the uh, protein isolates too, especially if it's soy, because that's going to give you an estrogen spike and you don't want that. Interesting. Well, guess what? Quiz number four, our audience is absolutely on it. And uh, you asked them if uh, zinc increases testosterone, why would it be recommended for PCOS, a high testosterone condition, of course, in women? And the audience, um, 100% of respondents, wow, say zinc helps regulate or interacts with estrogen, which comes from testosterone. They're correct. They're absolutely correct because it, it inhibits the enzyme for that conversion. Um, but I'll save most of this for the uh, video coming out. But I will say this, that zinc regulates um, many hormones. So if you have too much testosterone, it will bring it down. If you have too little testosterone, it'll bring it up. So it brings it to what your normal level is from various pathways. So stay tuned for that uh, video, but it's a very important trace mineral for hormones in general. Grow, it in, helps increase growth hormone. It helps the conversion of the thyroid hormone. It helps reduce insulin. It does a lot. That's fantastic. Well, next up from our green room is John. Uh, and John, if you'll make sure you're unmuted, you're on with Dr. Berg. Hey, Dr. Berg. Hi. A uh, question for you. Um, I currently work third shift, so that's 1 a.m. to 9 a.m. That's Sunday through Friday morning. And I start eating around 6 a.m. and my windows open anywhere between 6 a.m. to 12 or 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. My question is about the weekends. Um, I try to push no food because on the weekends I want to try to flip to be with my family and eat meals with my family. So um, 
I try to push my window between 10 a.m. to 6 or 11 to 7 so I can eat with the family. Is that, my question is, is that harming my, you know, my insulin resistance or is that screwing me up in any way as I push it further? And then back on Sunday for the week, I flip back to the other hours. I totally understand the problem you're running into because it's a difficult problem um, because it's kind of going off this, this uh, pattern that you develop and it's tough. It is very tough because when, when you start rotating your shift um, and you're up, it can affect the sleep cycles and it can affect the blood sugars. Now, if you're um, really healthy, hopefully you are, you can get, get by with it. But you're going to have to work harder at uh, kind of keeping your body consistent. Uh, if you keep your carbs low and you keep these other factors in check, I think you can get away with it. Um, the, the other thing that you probably want to take more of um, if you're on this split shift is a, <clears throat> is a really key nutrient that supports the circadian rhythms uh, more than any other nutrient, and that would be vitamin D3. So uh, you want to take minimally 10,000 IUs per day on that. I think that will help kind of mitigate some of the effects. Um, have you noticed that um, your blood sugars are off on the weekends more than the weekday? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So it's one of those things that you're going to have to cope as well as you can and keep these other things in check um, because it's it definitely puts a strain on your um, those pathways um, that involve melatonin, serotonin, and cortisol, and so, um, but as long as you keep your carbs really, really low, and you try to do maybe a little more intermittent fasting, and then you also take vitamin D, I think that could counter it. Sounds good. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. That's great. I tell you what, I worked a, um, a 3 to 11 p.m. shift back in my wild days, and my biggest concern was the bars were winding down when you got there about 11.30. Hey, fellas, where are you going? That yeah. is a problem, Steve, I know, because when I want like to go out in the bars on the weekend, it's just like, it's like no one's there at 9 o'clock anymore. They come <laughs> at 10 or 11, so yeah, it's just I like to go early, maybe 5 or so. Exactly. Not happy hour. That's great. Well, listen, um, there's some people with a very sober mind because they answered this so quickly. Uh, oh, wait a minute. No, I, I've got to put out the next question. Forgive me. I'm behind. Here we go. Okay. Dr. Berg. Okay. What organ can cause bloodshot eyes if there's a problem with that organ? That's an interesting one. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, chew on that, audience. In the meantime, let's hear from Suzanne from YouTube. What are your thoughts on prolonged fasting for someone with an enlarged spleen that contains a cyst, a gallstone, and a fatty liver? Boy, she's got to come in every which way. That's from Suzanne. Well, she, she's doing the right thing, fasting, but um, she has, to, I would do prolonged fasting. Prolonged fasting has a fascinating epigenetic effect on the immune system, which the spleen is a big part of. And if you have um, spleen of megaly or an enlargement of the spleen, you want to do fasting, you want to take vitamin D, you definitely want to take vitamin um, zinc, which is a mineral. Um, that's what I would do if I were you. Um, and of course, get on keto. Um, All right, that sounds great. Well, this is an interesting question. Uh, Todd from YouTube, wouldn't it make sense to avoid certain fats while on keto so that your body continues to burn its own fat? Well, that's very, very smart. Yes, um, I would recommend in the very beginning part of keto, you, um, you increase your fat for the purpose of going longer with your fasting. And as soon as you, your hunger starts going down and you get used to it and you're burning fat, your appetite will go away. At that point, that's when you should start reducing the extra fat, the MCT oil and this and that, uh, and just have the fat that normally comes with the protein. And that way we can force the body to burn its own fat for fuel if you have a slow metabolism and you want to speed things up. Um, so that's what I would recommend. So there's kind of two parts in a ketogenic cycle that I would recommend more fat in the very, very beginning to get into it and at the very end where you're maintaining so you don't lose too much weight. But in the middle part, you don't want to be doing massive amounts of fat all the time unless you have a fast metabolism. 
Um, so um, the other thing that I see a lot of people, they're on this, they read this book and they're like on this, uh, doing intermittent fasting and they're doing um, their keto plan and they're told to have this many meals and they're following this pattern, but they're not asking themselves, am I really hungry before this meal? And they're eating when they're actually not hungry because it's part of the plan. So anytime you eat when you're not hungry, you pretty much just screw it up. You shut down your fat burning because you're going to stimulate insulin. Insulin is triggered by eating. So if you're really serious about losing weight and you have a slow metabolism and you really are, you want to get more success, don't eat if you're not hungry. <laughs> it's a new concept, but regardless of, you know, your pattern, whatever, if you're not hungry, go longer. But there's so many people that are eating when they're not hungry and they kind of screw it over, screw it up because uh, um, now you're going to be hungry because you ate. That's about interesting. An hour and a half later. That's interesting, Dr. Berg. And you know, I, I feel that way because I am not hungry much more than I am, but I'm looking for some sort of entertainment and, you know, and I've been doing yeah. more exercise, but I just think, what am I going to do now that, uh, you know, I'm squared away in that regard. So, uh, but it's not. Why don't you get, why don't you have entertainment by watching the food channel? <laughs> it should. And uh, that can be your entertainment. Now right. I'm being very sarcastic. Right. Southern desserts. That. That's the one I always love. Southern desserts. So uh, fried apple pie, fried cherry pie, uh, all that stuff. It's got to be good for you. Hey, uh, listen, why don't we go to uh, Edmund. Uh, and Edmund, unmute yourself. And we're going to put you on with Dr. Berg for your one question. Uh, Perfectly. Can you hear me? Perfectly. I think I'm unmuted. You're okay. all set to go, Edmund. Uh, first of all, I wanted to thank you. Uh, first of all, I wanted to thank you very much at this Thanksgiving. I'm very grateful and thankful for your work and for your uh, it, your consistent, dispassionate, scientific um, su uh, suggestions. They've worked. They really helped me a lot. I've over the last eleven. 11 months, excuse me, I um, have lost over 40 pounds. Um, I had a, I had a real basketball stomach. I mean, it's almost like a medicine ball stomach and now wow. it's flat. And um, I really appreciate it. Uh, thank oh, you so much, that. sir. Uh, my question, my question is really uh, a little philosophical or, or I, I don't know what you would call it, but I, I tend to read um, widely in the in the literature. Uh, 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 I read I read the various other um, health experts and diet experts and so forth. And in the camp of the uh, the whole food vegan uh, uh, group, I won't mention any names, but but they consistently. Um, recommend against eating much fat at all. And, and, and they say that uh, insulin resistance comes from eating too much fat, especially saturated fat. And the, the mechanism that they, that they cite is that saturated fat in particular, and I'm not sure about the other fats, but saturated fat in particular binds to the receptors in the, in the cells and blocks the effects of insulin. So that's, and they have scientific articles to support this mechanism. So it, uh, it seems to run counter to, to, the, to your healthy keto uh, uh, approach. And by the way, I, I do one meal a day or one and a quarter meals a day, and I'm very happy with that. And it's helped me a lot. Although uh, in the last couple of weeks, I got a high blood sugar reading, uh, not not that high, 107, but I've always been below 98, and I've always had a, a A1C below 5.6. So it prompted my my question about fat and the as the cause of insulin resistance. Yeah. So, what are your thoughts on that? So, it's a, what's really interesting is because you have um, 
people, lots of them, that um, bring back their, their, their cholesterol profiles and their insulin fasting, insulin profiles and their HOMA IR, all this data, and you, they went on a high fat, low carb diet and you see these amazing results. And then you have other people who have, um, I'm vegan and they have low saturated fats. Uh, and they come back and they show you these results. It's like, wow, look at this. Great. I feel, I feel really good. Um, so then they're, they find some, some research and they're validating that. Um, there's a really good um, medical doctor researcher that I think you should watch. Um, <laughs> Professor Tim Noakes from South Africa. Um, this guy um, was attacked for promoting a high fat diet and he goes head to head against these uh these guys and he really understands the literature and he kind of goes through in a real simple way and explains how they take these bits and pieces from these studies and they they manipulate it and they alter it and so i think that would be something for you to look at because um there is a lot okay. of holes in the bucket there's a lot of um interpretation arbitraries but that being said, I think the best way to solve this argument is just to go ahead and try, try a vegan diet for three months and then try high fat keto, do the testing on yourself and see how your results occur. And uh, then you'll know for sure because you did an experiment on your own body. Interesting. Well, Edmund, listen, thanks for okay. joining us. Uh, we are right near the top of the hour and we've got some uh, additional homework to do here. And Dr. Berg, would you first describe to our international audience the great news about getting products uh, from you now available internationally in certain uh, countries and so on? Yeah, and I think uh, we'll put a link down below, but now we uh, are in different uh, places in Europe. And there's a couple of websites if you're in Russia and Europe and mid the Middle East. And so that way you can get products in that area without having it shipped from the U.S. So that'll save you some money with that. So that's a kind of exciting news. Um, yes, and um, I think we have a, a holiday coming up, Thanksgiving. So I wanna wish everyone a great Thanksgiving and I, we will be doing the show on Friday next, next week, but I'm sure everyone is gonna to stick to the keto plan through this Thanksgiving uh, and you won't have the dressing of the mashed potatoes, which I really appreciate. Um, but there is a way to make all your food keto friendly I mean, I, 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 every year I would put out these recipes and for some reason I can't find the recipes. So I'll have to find them quickly and put them out there. Um, but I will be doing some videos. If some of you have slipped off the wagon and need to get back to the wagon, but just don't, don't do this where, where you have, well, I'm going to go off the program from Thanksgiving to new year's and just have one whole month where you're just like off the program. If you go off the program, get right back on the wagon and then ride the wave. Um, and you'll be happy for that because um, um, it's not worth it. And it's so that would be my advice, Steve. Absolutely. And I tell you what, I've been to the Berg, been blessed to be at the Berg's uh, joint for great uh, eating. I don't know if it was a holiday. I think it was a holiday party. And there is no suffering with Karen's incredible uh, desserts and different keto friendly things, just cauliflower casserole with cheese drooling everywhere. I mean, it is really fun. So I sure appreciate that and know that if you have the, the wherewithal to get the, these recipes and do a little research, uh, you, you can just have a great life on keto. And by the way, we didn't get to our final quiz question answer, which was answered and it's uh, asks, what organ can cause bloodshot eyes besides uh, whiskey. That's not an organ, but everyone said 85% say the liver, 5% say the pancreas, 5% say the gallbladder, and the other five say adrenals. The answer is the liver. And I used to have that problem really bad and I didn't know what it was, but it was the liver. And I'll be releasing a video um, showing you more about that on myself before and after keto and intermittent fasting. So uh, I'll go through all the different points. And this video is some really interesting things about you can identify what's going on internally by looking at someone's face. So you can look at around their eyes, the eyes themselves, the, the, the shape of their face to predict what's happening on the inside. So I will be releasing that video 
maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day. But um, stay tuned for that one because um, you'll like that. That's interesting. By the way, Terry, our producer, mentioned that Thanksgiving was last month for our viewers in Canada. You got a lot of pals up there, I know. Oh, really? So, so happy Thanksgiving okay. uh, to them, uh, however that manifests itself. And, Doc, here's the last bit of stuff we need to get to, your upcoming videos. All right, so you want me to tell uh, – okay, so let me, uh, let me bring them up. <clears throat> okay, so – Okay, so if you had a choice between a heart attack and a stroke, which one would you, would you rather have? If you had to make a choice. Oh, boy. That, that's one of my videos. We'll also be talking about premenstrual dysphoric disorder, which I'm sure that's going to be a popular, and I'm being sarcastic. It's going to be very specific to a certain population. Um, we'll talk about calcium in your immune system, the keto macros, and doing the maintenance program on keto. And also, an interesting video on where your metabolism is actually located, which is going to be surprising some people. And you usually have a few others to talk about. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we have a lot more um, videos um, that I'll share with you. Um, and so I'm, I'm really um, having some really interesting ones in the next couple of weeks. So I have them all planned out. So stay tuned. And just keep watching the, um, your home channel, and I should pop right up. Unfortunately, not all my subscribers um, um, get that those notifications. So um, I think a small percentage do, but you can watch it on my blog, uh, drberg.com. On that note, thank you all for uh, your participation and your attention. I will see you next week. Mm -hmm.